Hey guys and welcome back to my channel where today I want to do something a little bit different. Today I want to sort of talk over some footage I recorded back in June uh, when I went to explore an abandoned asylum. So basically I went here with my friend and it's in a location sort of close to me but not quite that close to me. And we went here because we wanted to just sort of get some cool pictures but while I was there I also recorded quite a lot of footage. I have about 40 minutes worth of footage altogether that I can actually talk about in this video. And I wanted to make this video for a while now but I sort of just hadn't had the time until now to really sit down and talk about it. And this is, like I say, something different to what I normally do. So if you do go ahead and enjoy this video, it would mean a lot if you could just go ahead and leave a like rating. If you don't enjoy the video for any reason, go ahead and leave a dislike rating. It sort of lets me know whether to do this type of thing in the future. And also put down in the comments below as well if you like it or dislike it, the reasons why you like it or dislike this video. And also bear in mind when I recorded this footage back in June, that I didn't actually do it for a YouTube video or anything like that. So the footage on its own will not make sense, which is why I'm going to be talking over this footage a little bit to sort of try and explain a little bit more about what's happening in the footage. So we went to this abandoned asylum called St. Crispin's which is sort of near Northampton and this place has been abandoned for quite a while now. I don't know exactly when it shut down but it had been shut down for a while as you can see in that footage that you'll see in a minute and it wasn't too difficult to get in either because there was like this fence that sort of surrounded the whole area but there were places in this fence where people like kicked holes into to obviously get into this area so we basically just found one of those and we snuck in and then we managed to get into this abandoned asylum. So this right here was actually recorded as a point of view shot from my GoPro and it's the only time I actually used my GoPro in the entire day that we were there. At the time I just thought it'd be a cool idea to put my GoPro on my head and just sort of record me walking down and sort of my first impressions of this place. At first we were also being very quiet because we didn't exactly know if we were meant to be there but after a while we sort of realised that you know other people come here all the time so it wasn't really that much of a secretive place. But at first, we were just sort of exploring a little bit in this first room, just having a look around for a while. It was really cool being in something different in this environment where it was all just derelict and it was something that I'd not really experienced previous to this. So that's why I was just taking it slow, looking around, sort of trying to take it all in because it was quite surreal being in a place like this. Like thinking to yourself that this is actually an area, like this whole time this is an abandoned asylum. So this is where like crazy people had been before this was actually abandoned. This was, in essence, a prison for people who were insane. So from there we went up a couple floors and when you're up above a couple floors like for some reason like the roof slash the floor of these different levels of this building they had like the floor sort of taken out of it so all that was left was like the sort of wooden support of each floor. As you can see in some of this footage here as I look down you can look down like three floors and right to the bottom where we just were in the previous bit of footage. But right here we started walking on these plants because we wanted to get some cool pictures that we eventually wanted to put up on our Facebook pages and also on Instagram as well. As you can see by some of this footage right here, you can actually see that part of this building, if not a majority of it, had actually been burnt down, which is probably why there's only the wooden support left of all the floors. But you can see here the roof has been caved in somehow or another. I don't know whether it was weather decay or whether it was actually from being vandalised. But one way or another, this building has been left in the state and again, it's sort of surreal seeing this sort of thing in person. Bring that hat mess up my hair. That's pretty cool though the way it's collapsed. What did you say about sunlight up there? <laughs> Alright, let me come around the neck. 
Yeah, three stories, isn't it? Yeah. I forgot it was back holiday. <laughs> I don't think a camera can pick up quite how high it is. So after having a little bit of fun up there, we decided to go downstairs into the little basement area. And the first thing that I saw as I went down into this basement area was actually a little blackboard on the left hand side as we walked in. And there was like some names on the blackboard. It was sort of hard to try and read the names, but there were names of these people that lived there, I guess, or these uh, insane people that lived there. And I'm guessing maybe these are the names of the people who not only lived there and were like trapped there but also were working there at the same time trying to earn a little bit of money because downstairs in this basement there were like these electrical boxes and there was all sorts of weird stuff that we didn't really want to get too close to and there was also this big like puddle of water for some reason as well i don't know if this was like rainwater that had been collected over time but we walked over to it and i didn't know what it was at first and it sort of looked like a massive sort of layer of cobwebs but then we just threw a little stone in there and realized it was actually water in the basement of this building in particular it was really pitch black so I had to use my phone light to actually sort of illuminate all the sort of room so everything that you see in this room is only being lit up by my iPhone so it's a little bit poor quality but this is basically what was down there. There wasn't really a lot that was down there. There was a few machines and stuff, but there wasn't really too much to really look at. So after we were done with that building, we decided to run to the next building because we didn't know if we were actually meant to be there. And just in case we weren't, we wanted to try and sort of keep as low key as possible. We weren't there to try and vandalize or anything. We were there purely to try and get some really cool photos and some really cool footage. But even so, we still wanted to keep quiet just in case. But we run to the next building and immediately we go sort of to the left hand side and we see some graffiti on the wall that says you're next. Now I don't know if this was written up by one of the prisoners while they were there or whether it was written up after this place had been abandoned and someone just putting it there to try and sort of make the place a little bit more edgy. But it was definitely quite a cool but creepy like vibe having all this graffiti around saying things like you're next and having like handprints everywhere. There was something about it and there was a really cool atmosphere and just sort of a really eerie vibe about it. As we walk around this building and actually the entire like place there was some really cool looking graffiti and there was others that were like really just really crap graffiti but overall there was a really cool mixture of detailed art as well as some really simplistic art as well that was on the walls i tried to capture as much as i can and there were certain things like nazi symbolism on the walls as well as other things that i'll show you later on in the video as well but in this video footage right here that i'm showing you right now there wasn't really a lot to see in this particular building other than just the graffiti that was around this building but then coming up to the end of this footage right here, we actually sort of walk out and we could hear somebody talking and then my mate sort of said like, you know, just be a bit quiet. And at the end of the footage right here, you can actually see just right in front of my friend was other people walking off. Now it was at this point we realized that there was actually other people in this place. These are the only other people we saw in the entire time that we were there. These people were there for the same reason we were. They just wanted to take some cool pictures and actually explore the place. They weren't there for like trying to wreck the place or anything. But I feel like seeing these people actually made us feel a little bit more sort of at ease and we weren't quite on edge whether we were going to get caught or not because we weren't the only people there. And it's sort of more of a place where people do come on a daily basis. And I feel like they just don't really care if people go there. Oh, stinging nettles. Wow. Oh wow. That looks pretty cool. Now this next area is another area that we went to to try and take some really cool pictures because it was just one of those areas where it just looked like a cool place to take some pictures. So that's exactly what we did. I set my camera up on a tripod which is what you'll see now on screen. And we were just trying to get some cool images of us climbing up onto this little ledge thing up there. Just trying to like do some poses and whatnot. And eventually I managed to get some like selfies and whatnot up there. But it was just a cool area to go there again. And just take some pictures because there were like obviously long grass and it was overgrown. And there was also like scaffolding that had just been left there. So obviously they tried to do something with this place. But then eventually just ended up like leaving it like it is. Okay, so after spending a couple hours in this little sort of area trying to get some cool pictures, we decided to go on to the next building, which was sort of like the third building that we went into, 
And to get there, again, there was sort of another little pathway that we had to sort of run across. But when we ran across there, we had sort of an issue that there was a door that we thought was the only way to get into this building. We were trying to sort of like kick it down, but it wasn't working. So we then had to go around the side of the building. Is there not like another way? Maybe around the side, there's a load of fences. Yeah. Oh. oh nice, I just stepped in mud. And when we went around the side of the building, I was looking at sort of the back of the building, like trying to take it all in as much as I could on camera. But we also found out the reason why we couldn't actually kick this door down and why it wouldn't open. Now I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but it really does go without saying that if you ever do something like this, if you ever go exploring an abandoned place, you have to know that there are going to be certain times and certain things you're going to be sort of a bit in a bit more danger than others. As we walked into this building, my friend pointed me at a room, but he also told me to sort of be a bit careful. As I looked in there, there was a big electrical box and it was open and we had no idea whether the vaults were still on or not and this is one of those times where i mean that you have to be careful when you're at places like this because we could have easily walked into that room without really looking and then you know if this electrical stuff was still alive we could have got shocked obviously with taking precautions we looked in there and then decided not to even go in that room but instead i zoomed in with my camera a little bit looking at like the label i think of it saying danger of electricity or whatever it says but this is something that you've got to keep in mind. If you ever go somewhere like this, just be careful that there's not something like that that you can easily walk into. But right next to that was the door that we tried to sort of open up. And as you can see, there was a load of rubble on the floor that was sort of barricading it up. So that was the reason why we initially could not open that door. I actually turned around, I was looking at some graffiti. I think at this point this says Scooby-Doo. But this building was a little bit bigger than the others. So we decided to explore sort of the bottom floor just a little bit more. Update my Snapchat. All along down here, little cells. Here's a little cell tour. They got a bright width. Probably a door that would have been locked in. Nice little view. Probably been a lot different. But it's really small. So right now we are on the second floor and this is where he has some of the cells which were obvious that they were cells. So as we was walking down I was actually sort of giving a little bit of a cell tour if you wish. But there was sort of like wind in the footage. I do apologise about the audio not being the greatest. So this was just the cells in their locations. There wasn't really a lot to say about them. They were quite empty but they were also just really small. So as you can see here there's a shot where I just left the camera on the floor and we started walking off into distance and the reason I did this was to try and give a little bit more of a size comparison of how big this place was in comparison to us two that were just walking away. These corridors are very big and they echoed quite a lot as well but not only that I also do know that this would have been a quite a cool looking shot if I did it just right so I also did it for that reason as well but these corridors are very big and I just wanted to get the size comparison of just how big these corridors were. 
So again, in this building, we decided to go into the foundation bit, in the little basement area, if you will, and we went underground. This is a little bit bigger than the other area that we went into, because there was like a long corridor underground that we went into, which was again pitch black, so we had to use our iPhones for like lighting down there. But as we go down there, there was immediately some sort of a big hole that we had to jump over, and I ended up managing to jump over it because I just stepped on this pipe and then managed to sort of vault myself over. Then we got to another point where I had to leave my tripod behind because it was so small and so cramped in this little area. We had to climb through sort of like three foot tall holes just to go through certain points of this. And it was a long, small, sort of narrow corridor area that we had to walk through. Put a dark history or something. Um, what do you mean a dark history? How did you get across here? Did you just... I did not realise the roof was that small. I literally just hit my head. <laughs> How often do you get to go like, in the foundations of the building? Yeah, I know. Okay. Wait, I need to put my tripod down somewhere. It's not easy carrying this thing. We're going on, I need to remember I left it there. And as we were walking through here at some point, I don't know where about it was in the footage because I didn't actually pick it up on the footage. We only noticed it as we were walking back after the footage was stopped. But at some point there was actually a dead cat that we saw and this cat had been there for at least a couple of months because when we shined the lights on it, there was like green, like the, the color of the cat was green. It was disgusting. So there was obviously that in the way and we didn't know if we stepped on it walking up to the point where we turned the camera off. So that was a little bit like freaky to see as well. And that was somewhat something that made us want to get out of there as well, just because it was a little bit like odd having a dead cat there. There were also candles along the pipes as well, which is very odd because they probably would have been there before the asylum actually went abandoned. Oh yeah. I've got it on just for my camera, a little bit of light. Oh wow. That's a tiny ass door. Yeah, what, what we're surprised this goes longer than the actual goes all the way to the other buildings. How, how far are we going? I don't know, but you know, we, we saw those pumps and those other, like the furthest building. Yeah. What if we're surprised if they run all the way from there? Because the practice is more than better. Right? Oh. Good to know they had monster back in the day as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You come with a flash. Uh yeah. So coming up to the last building that I actually managed to record footage at, we went to a couple more after this, but I decided not to record because my camera was dying. But at this building right here, this was probably the coolest one to go to because it was quite nice and open. It was a bit more like light that was in this building, but also it was probably the most dangerous building that we were in in terms of climbing, as you'll see in the footage in a minute. But as we were sort of like walking around, my friend had already sort of climbed up to the third floor of where we wanted to climb up to. So I thought, all right, I'll climb up there as well. But as we were climbing up, these stairs were sort of in a sort of round the corner sort of formation. But as you go up to a certain point, they stop sort of going around the corner and you just walk up to the end of the ledge and it's somewhere where you could easily fall off if you're obviously not paying attention. But instead what you had to do was somewhat, it's hard to explain, but you had to sort of hug the wall to then go around. So where I was looking at this point in the footage, you had to sort of then go to the right hand side which normally there would have been stairs there, but obviously it had been demolished so that there weren't any stairs there. So what we had to do was sort of just climb round and then get up onto the next set of stairs. But the problem with that as well is the fact that we obviously had the like stuff on us, we had a bag and we had a camera on us. And also as you go on to the next set of stairs, 
as you could hear in the footage, we were talking about it being like really slopey and that's because there was so much dust and dirt on it that these were basically not even stairs anymore because they have so much stuff in it, but it was more like a slope and it was like a little slide that you had to be very careful not to slide down. Yeah. I'll do this. Off. Yeah, go on. Can do. I feel like I'll need both hands to get round there. Sick. But be careful, there's glass. Watch your foot when you get round here. Oh, you want me to take your bag? Sorry. Well, I, you know. Do you need your bag? Um, leave it on the stairs where you are now. Might be an idea. Yeah, leave it on the stairs where you are now. Oh, that's a lot easier without a tripod. Right, let me get out of your way. Can look at that. Oh, you like this. You. Yeah. Oh, that, I mean, that ramp. <laughs> being a ramp, yeah. There's people in there now, can you hear them? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And this is basically the last bit of footage I've got right here. In this little bit right here, I just sort of look out a little bit. I point my head out to have a look to see sort of exactly how high up at this point we were. And just to sort of have a look at the whole area to see what it looks like. And also this little bit right here where we was just sort of climbing down. But that's basically all the footage I managed to get. I will also add some images in here as well along the way as I'm talking about this. But like I said at the beginning of the video guys, I did not record any of this in mind that this would go on a YouTube channel. I purely recorded it for my own like keepsake and for my own sort of like memories because I do that a lot with pictures and videos. I like to just take a load and then keep them for my own memories sort of like for nostalgic reasons. But I decided it'd be cool to sort of talk about it and show you guys exactly what we got up to in the summer. And I just wanted to sort of share this experience with you guys. And there was a lot more that I probably couldn't remember. But if you guys like this video, then go ahead and like I say, leave a like rating. Also, do let me know down, down in the comments below. And I'll try and do a few more of these, but sort of more tailored towards an actual YouTube video and not just random video clips added in together. Maybe I'll do them sort of more like a vlog style. So rather than talking in front of a camera in my own bedroom, I'll be talking to the camera while they're at the asylum or wherever we are when we're at an abandoned place. So like I say, if you like the video, leave a like rating. If you dislike it, leave it a dislike rating, but just let me know why, so then I know if my audience actually likes this type of content or not. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you did, go ahead and enjoy it, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more content. This is something new and something different that I've never actually done before, so this video probably won't turn out anywhere near as good as I think it will, but I'm really hoping that I'll do more of this type of content in the future. But without further ado, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out. Yes, yes, yes.